Growing up, my dad gave my elder brother and me any spare change he had, so we could buy the newest technology of that time, a desktop computer for when we went to college. Every day, he would come up from work, put the rupee coins in our hands, and we would run into our rooms and put this money in our piggy banks. After a couple of years, we had a decent amount of money. It was August of 2002, I was 12 years old then, sitting in my room and working on my homework, when my dad stormed into the room and he was upset like never before. He went straight to the piggy bank, picked it up and smashed it to the ground. He then took the money and left the room. I was shocked. Unsure of what just happened, I went to the ground to pick up the broken pieces of piggy bank and look if there was any money left. There was none. It was when I realized our family was at the bottom of the economic pyramid. Why were we there? My dad had no stable job for years. He had no college degree either. So when his machine tools workshop ran out of business, he went hustling to find a next job so he could run the family. With no history of borrowing, he was labeled risky and costly and was turned away by local banks, leaving him no option but to take a desperate measure. It may sound cliche, but that broken piggy bank has become my symbol of shattered dreams for my family and many families around the world trying to break the vicious cycles of poverty. As a teenager, it was frustrating to see newspapers claim the economy had grown many fold, while we were at the very same place, despite years of hard work. I wondered if our family was even part of the economy. Our financial struggles continued until I graduated from college and found a job at a bank. Yes, a bank. The system that once rejected us has now become our family's lifeline. Isn't that an irony? Or is it what banks and businesses are supposed to do? Provide a lifeline to the community around them. I worked at this bank and provided a comfortable life to my family. But I couldn't erase the image of broken piggy bank from my heart. I wondered how many families around this world are taking desperate measures only to see themselves stuck in a loop. So in 2016, I decided to tackle this problem by creating a technology product that would provide microcredit to unbanked families in India. One of my first customers was Sunil, who wanted a loan for $500 to pay for his college fee and continue his education. He had good grades from his high school and earned a small income by working part-time at a food delivery company. He and his family lived in a shanty house in the city outskirts of Bangalore. His dad drove a taxi and earned $200 a month. So when Sunil and his dad went to the nearest bank to apply for a loan, they were rejected. The reason they were rejected was because of the risky income profile of his family and there was no profit to be made of a small loan. With our technology, he could apply for a loan from the comfort of his mobile phone by taking photographs of his documents and submitting an online application. He was approved instantly, and he could enroll in college the next day. Where banks are unprofitable loan, our technology could see an opportunity. Using mobile touch points, we reduced the cost structure and reinvented the business model of a loan. Our machine learning algorithms could crunch through his bank accounts and mobile data and saw an opportunity and provided a small loan. And the result? He paid back the loan in just nine months. We gave thousands of such loans, loans that help taxi drivers, small business merchants, restaurant owners, pay for their kids' school fee and advance the family forward. Families that were traditionally ignored by the banks are now able to access loans, dream big, and progress ahead in life. Today, Sunil is a proud first generation graduate of his family. He has a job as a car sales representative and earns $600 a month. He has access to formal banks and healthcare and doesn't have to take desperate measures to take care of his family. 
The impact I had on Sunil's life showed me that technology can break traditional business models and benefit billions of people at the bottom of the pyramid. There is hope. What was not possible many years ago when my family suffered is possible today thanks to mobile phones and technology. The upward mobility that Sunil saw is a resounding example of how removing barriers to financial access can turn things around for people at the bottom of the pyramid. And there are more than 4 billion people waiting at the bottom of the pyramid, making less than $1,500 a year and looking to overcome barriers in finance, healthcare, education, and employment. And it's not a problem specific to India or other developing countries. Take United States, for example. Over the last 30 years, the top 10% of the American their wealth grew by 200%, a staggering 200%, whereas the bottom 50% remained at the same place. What do we all do about this? From here on, I can see the world going in two ways. One, companies and individuals don't think about these 4 billion people. They think it's the government's responsibility to address this, not theirs. Two, this resonates with me well. As business leaders, we embrace reality. We may not be able to get rid of poverty completely, but we can do our best to remove the systemic barriers in our society. And that's the path I choose to go down in my career. If you're an entrepreneur, I urge you to create technology solutions that would remove the economic asymmetries our world is in. It is difficult, but not impossible, to create profitable businesses doing this. If you're an investor, I urge you to back bold ideas and commit to them over long periods of time and not just look for short-term opportunities. In addition to financial returns, it's time investors looked at economic inclusion created by their investments. When I moved to Bay Area, I was excited that I was stepping into the technological future, a perfect place. I saw self-driving cars, delivery robots, and drones. But I also saw that Valley was far from reality, a far from perfect place. Last year, I took an Uber ride from San Francisco airport. I started a conversation with the driver and realized he was a college dropout student. As we turned onto the Palm Drive, he got excited and asked me what I was doing here. I told him I was a student. His eyes lit up immediately and said, he too wanted to come to Stanford. And here he is, working two jobs a day to make ends meet. If I don't have conversations like those, I fear I might live in a bubble and be blind to people living from paycheck to paycheck. We all live in a bubble if we don't see janitors, drivers, and the lives of four billion people breaking their piggy banks every single day. Let's use technology that can break barriers so people don't have to break their piggy banks. Thank you.